So the Brooklyn Nets have officially traded Kevin Durant. And as someone who has done journalism for the Brooklyn Nets and has been a fan since I was wearing a Marbury jersey over my diapers, I'm going to give my opinion on this whole situation. And this might be me going more of my initial reaction. That might be a bit impartial and emotional since the trade just went down about nine hours ago at the time of this recording. But I have some points I wrote down on my emotions and opinions on this whole thing. So let's just get into it. Also, if you guys enjoy the NBA or just the Brooklyn Nets, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. So I'm just going to flash the trade up on the screen here. I really don't have it in me to read everything off that the Nets received back for Durant. And the Nets certainly did get a back a lot back in return for Durant, but they didn't get one elite player. And that's where my first problem with this trade stands. It's upsetting because I was a fan of the package that the Celtics reportedly offered the Nets this past summer, which included Jalen Brown, Derek White, and a draft pick. But the Nets refused because of the lack of draft compensation and because they wanted Marcus Smart in the trade as well. And with the fact that Jalen Brown would be the best player on this Nets team currently, I have to look at Nets GM Sean Marks now and say, hey, the pressure is on. You got those draft picks you apparently coveted so badly, so you better not strike out on them. And it will be very easy for the Nets to strike out on them as they're the Suns draft picks, which I assume will be at the end of the first round now, that you're adding a top five player to a team that won the Western Conference nearly two years ago. And listen, draft picks at the end of the first round have worked out for Sean Marks in the past occasionally as you have Karis LeVert back in 2016 as he was picked with the 20th pick that the Nets traded with the Pacers for. Jared Allen was in 2017 and he was drafted with the 22nd pick. And you have the current Net, Cam Thomas, who just became the youngest NBA player ever to score 40 or more points in three straight games, as well as joining LeBron James as the youngest players to score 44 or more points in back-to-back games. And Cam Thomas was drafted drafted with the 27th pick. So my problem though is that you need to you need stars to win in the NBA and the three guys that I just named are great players no doubt about it but none of them are stars. Jalen Brown though he's a star. Listen the only thing the Nets or even us Nets fans can do now is simply look forward not in the past but if I'm looking at where everything went wrong it could be one of many different things in my eyes. We can blame Nets owner Joe Sy, who clearly had a disdain for Kyrie Irving and, in my opinion, made a call in a lot of the moves that the Nets made. Uh, Should we blame Steve Nash, who was clearly the man who apparently drove Harden to request a trade out of Brooklyn? Should we blame Nets ownership and Sean Marks, the the way they were together, and they didn't give Kyrie his request of a long-term max deal recently, which was basically the domino that fell over and set the Nets on fire? I'm not too sure, but it seems that if we talk beyond Harden leaving and anything related to the Nets' big three of Harden, KD, and Kyrie, it seems the Nets' best bet to salvage their franchise would have been to just say F it and blow it all up this past summer, get Brandon Ingram or Jalen Brown in return for Kevin Durant at trade this past summer, accept the Lakers package this past summer or for Kyrie Irving and let the season play out and see where things would have gotten you with a team that had Cam Johnson along with Jalen Brown or Brandon Ingram, Nick Claxton, etc. And, and that's just my raw and honest opinion on the Nets. In Maybe I'm in denial, the pain or the anger stage of grief right now as a Nets fan, but that's just how I'm feeling. It should have been handled and you probably shouldn't have even went into this season with Durant and Irving on your roster. Joe Sy made it clear he does not care about keeping his stars happy, which is a problem. When Kevin Durant requested out this past summer, Joe Sy came out and said he would rather have a team that plays hard, that he's proud of, and he's proud to own, that wins 40 games and fights for the play-in, rather than a team that has more talent that he's not proud to be a part of. And with that, I say the Brooklyn Nets will never win an NBA championship with Joe Sy as his owner. That's it. You don't win championships without stars. There's a lot of times where I looked at Kyrie Irving during his Nets tenure. Listen, I said, bro, please chill out with all this drama shit right now. Like, we don't need this. And listen, the Nets went on to win 18 games in a 20-game stretch. The first time in Nets history that they've done that. And they were the only team in the NBA who's done that this season. And Joe Sy couldn't put his tail, his tail between his legs to keep Kyrie and his stars happy. And he had to find a way to put his pride over his team's success. And I know with many other Nets fans, they're not happy about it the same way I'm not happy about that. Kyrie's decision to put money over winning basketball can be viewed as selfish, I get it, but Joe Sy has put his money over winning basketball as well by not being willing to take on Kyle Kuzma's contract in a trade for Spencer Dinwiddie in 2021 after he was not willing to give Spencer Dinwiddie the contract that he wanted, and now you look at it, Spencer Dinwiddie, where is he on? He's on the Nets roster and they're paying him anyway if he remains here past the trade deadline. And also, of course, not being willing to keep Kyrie happy and just pay him is another problem I have with Joe Sy. And guess what? Seems like those decisions turned out real great for the Nets, right? 
To me, the stretch of time lasting from the time of Kyrie's vaccination mandate debacle all the way to now leaves another stain on this Nets franchise, among the many other stains that they already had. And I don't think stars will like to see the way they handled the Kyrie contract situation and the Durant trade saga from this past summer, as well as their treatment of Harden, which seems like Harden wasn't lying too much even if he did exaggerate a bit to make himself look as good as possible. Regardless though, I put most of the blame on Nets ownership because losing three stars in a year and a half says a lot about how Joe Sy runs this organization. Also, Jalen Brown had some choice comments about Nets owner Joe Sy for Sy's stance on China and also his handling of business with Kyrie Irving, so it seems like that could have been a factor in why the Nets didn't go for Jalen Brown, and if that's the case, it's safe to say I'm not a fan of Joe Sy the same way I wasn't a fan of the Nets' last owner, Mikhail Prokhorov. It seems the last time, if not the only time, the Nets' owner was a good owner was the then New Jersey Nets' owner, Bruce Ratner. He brought in Rod Thorne, who was the Nets' best GM of all time, probably. And he, while he did make horrible draft night decisions, Rod Thorne, he is credited with being the guy behind acquiring Michael Jordan in the draft and also acquiring Jason Kidd in a trade with the Nets. Albeit, he wasn't keen on drafting Michael Jordan, so that kind of shows his incompetence in terms of drafting players. But we'll throw him a bone here since, of course, the Bulls did draft Michael Jordan. But the point of the being is that the guy who glossed over Michael Jordan during his time as the Bulls GM was the Nets' best GM. And if that doesn't show you the Nets' incompetence as a franchise, then I really don't know what will. Now that I've got all that out, let's look at the return the Nets got back for Durant. Let's start with Jay Crowder. Always been a fan of Jay Crowder, going back to his Celtics days, but he for sure will probably be moved for a young player or draft pick here, and Woj kind of already confirmed that. So there's that. There's no time, no need to really spend time on him. Um, Mikhail Bridges. Funny enough, I actually had a video planned out about a year or so ago, maybe, um, that I was working on how, how people compared Mikhail Bridges to Kawhi Leonard, which I think is a bit crazy. And while I get maybe one could say they have a similar prototype or build, I don't think he's the next Kawhi or anything close to that. Like, come on now. <laughs> he's a fine starter on a championship contender uh, as a fourth or fifth option. So that's fine to see. No problem with Mikhail Bridges. But now you'll need these stars or superstars to put around him for him to be that fourth or fifth option on a future Nets championship contender. Um, Cam Johnson, a nice rotation player who in my eyes should start over Ben Simmons now. He's averaging more points this season than Ben Simmons. He's having a career year pretty much overall on the board. And he's also shooting 45% from three. So he's a great stretch four that this Nets team could desperately use, especially when they have a non-shooter like Nick Claxton on the floor. So I would say you just got to hope he could be a great stretch four for the Nets if they ever do get stars back on this roster once again, which with this ownership group is pretty questionable, to be honest, if they'll ever get a star or superstar back on this team. Now, four draft picks and a pick swap. This is nice for the Nets as they have kind of reloaded their draft cabinet, I guess you could say, as they traded away a lot of picks for James Harden as well as other picks during this these last few years. But like I said earlier, you got to question how valuable these draft picks will be as you have to assume they'll be end of the first round picks as you sent a top five player to the 2021 Western Conference champs. And even if and when Chris Paul and Durant retire or just leave the Suns, you have to assume that Devin Booker will still be there you know preventing those picks from being top three draft picks in future NBA drafts and that's where my problem with this trade mostly stands you know what you'd be getting with a Brandon Ingram or Jalen Brown for example if they had pulled off those trades this past summer but we don't know who Marks could potentially find years down the line in the draft it, whether it be out of the lottery in the lottery whatever but you don't know where those picks are going to be my only hope is that Marks, having had come from San Antonio and learning from the Spurs system, is that he can build a Spurs-like team in Brooklyn as well. Tim Duncan was highly coveted coming out of Wake Forest and the first overall pick in 97 and the best power forward of all time. He was still able to surround him with Tony Parker, who was selected with the 28th pick in the 2001 NBA draft, and Manu Ginobili, who was selected 57th overall in 1999. And with the European basketball on the rise and guys like the Greek Freak being selected 15th overall in 2013, so not even a lottery pick, and Nikola Jokic being the 41st overall pick in 2014, so a second rounder, you got to hope that Marks can work his magic. But with the Nets, they're going to need a legendary coach to be anything like the Spurs and a historically great player on the level of Tim Duncan or just in that category. And honestly, I don't see either of those things happening, at least not anytime soon. 
All in all, I can say I think the Suns deserve an A grade for this trade and that the Nets deserve somewhere in the C's, whether that's a C plus, C or C minus. And the Nets look to have gotten robbed on yet another trade. And whether that's Joe Sy's fault for his issues with Jalen Brown or the issues for not just saying F it and blowing it up this past summer, the Nets now need to look forward towards cleaning house and building a franchise that's attractive to future star free agents, which seems like it'll be hard to do with their current owner and the stains he's put or continues to put on this already stained Nets franchise i have to hope that the nets do more moves on the horizon have more moves on the horizon today i should say and if that means trading a vet or veteran player for a draft pick then you do it i mean th- th- nobody should be off the table and i don't believe they should trade bridges thomas or claxton unless you get a huge haul for them which i don't see that happening I-, I just don't think anybody should be off the table and move them at the right price i have and always will trust sean marks as the nets gm my issue is i simply don't trust their owner there won't be much winning going on in brooklyn anytime soon so every nets fan you know who's a nets fan like me better strap on their seatbelts because we're about to enter the tunnel and i think that things are going to get dark for quite a bit of time in the place that now former brooklyn net kevin durant once referred to as nets world so yeah guys i don't know what else i can say that i didn't already say in this video but that's my raw and honest emotions and opinions around this trade and this era of nets basketball nine hours after the kevin durant trade has gone down anyway guys i want to know what you guys think about the nets the Kyrie kd era the trade or anything we talked about in the video down below in the comment section if you like the video though then please give it a like as it helps out a lot and i'll appreciate it and if you like the nets or the nba then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell that way you stay up to date with all the newest content and future content on my channel i'm not too sure how good nets related content will do with no stars on the team anymore on my channel so i might start talking more nba teams once again but let me know down in the comment section if you'd like more nets content other NBA teams or just certain players or whatever down below. Anyway, thank you guys for watching so much once again. I'm SCJ and I am out. Peace.